There's a growing and insidious trend in right-wing media. It is to take highly misleading and selectively edited videos of President Biden to cast doubt on President Biden's fitness for office. The Republican accounts circulating many of the clips responded, claiming the videos are unedited and promised lie, to keep a posting lie, them. A lie. We've been worried for years about AI deepfakes, that computer-generated images are going to trick people into believing something that's totally false. Cheap fakes are a little bit simpler. They're cheap. They're just distorted, out of context videos. That's what we're seeing. That's what the Biden administration, the Biden campaign is so worried about. Okay, much of that was pool video. I don't know if they understand the concept that you didn't have a bunch of reporters shooting those independently. They came from a single source. So all you have to do is watch the whole tape. Jason Chaffetz is with me now, Fox News contributor and former Republican congressman from Utah. Unedited video. It's not an opinion. It's what it is. Jason. Yeah, well, the American people can make up their own decision if you yes. watch those videos because they're they're not they're not edited. Look, in in isolation, you may be able to explain one or two of them. The the concern about President Biden is this is a pattern. This is this is not just one or two videos. And it, what, is it a deep fake or a, a cheap fake that that they've now had to get staff to walk with the president up to Marine One because they're concerned about his balance and know what it looks like? Is it a deep fake? that they had to go to the short steps there on Air Force One. He doesn't do a press conference to go out and defend himself. And you see him slurring hmm. words, messing up words. He, 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 after the Her report, who said, remember, you have a U.S. attorney who says, this guy has a trouble. He's having trouble with memory. And then he goes out to try to show that he's vibrant and does all that and refers to the president of Mexico when he was obviously talking about the president, I, I think, of Egypt or somebody in the Middle East. The, this is the totality of the record. It's not the fact that this prime minister has to walk all the way across and get Joe Biden's attention back on what they're actually doing. This, this is the pattern. It's not the isolation you of know, any one event. It's not the first time we've seen it, though, from the White House. Yeah. And so that, that continues. But the layering on by legacy and liberal media is confounding because that doesn't help their cause. To be, to be parroting the words of the White House on the cheap fakes and, and basically defending and blaming everybody else for the video that they know was not edited. They're taking the same pool uh, video intake that we have in our, in our retention purposes here. Like, we all can't be in the room, so we take that pool video from whoever is tasked with doing it, and it floats from network to network, that responsibility. Yeah. Do you remember back in the Ronald Reagan days? I'm old, old enough to remember the Sam Donaldson's of the world, the Brit Humes of the world. They would be. Do you think that anybody in the press pool would not be barking these questions daily at the White House? 100%. Instead, there's no intellectual, there's no intellectual curiosity. There's no concern by the traditional media. Oh, nothing to see here. They don't even ask the question, for goodness sake. Well, it's one thing not to ask the questions. It's another thing to just repeat what the White House is saying. Uh, tensions are flaring up between the White House and Israel again. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has voiced his frustrations with the Biden administration and the White House hit back after this. Watch. It's inconceivable that in the past few months, the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. We generally do not know what he's talking about. Uh, we just don't. There was one particular uh, shipment of munitions that was paused, and you've heard us talk about that many times. Don't have any updates on that. Uh, there are no other pauses, none, no other pauses or holds in place. Well, on top of that, there is a wide and emotional divide among Democrats over the Israel-Hamas war ahead of Netanyahu's upcoming address to Congress. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has called the prime minister a war criminal. Senator Bernie Sanders says Netanyahu is beholden to extreme racists in Israel, the divide also seen among voters. New Fox News polling shows some are supporting the U.S. financial aid to Israel, and that support is dipping. The biggest drop comes from liberal, democratic, and independent voters. The survey also found voters disapprove of Biden's handling of the war by a 31% margin. Wow. A majority of voters say they side with Israel's over the Palestinians when it comes to the war. What do you make of all of it, Jason? 
I think this shows how incredibly weak the president of the United States is. He lacks clarity. Why can't he, if he goes out and says our relationship with Israel is ironclad, then make it ironclad. And why not take the fight to Hamas and tell them, you know what, we're not going to put in any sort of um, a dock. We're not going to do anything until you return the hostages. Yes. We're not going to stand for you taking American hostages and hostages from around the world. Hamas, you did this. You fix that, then we'll start to have a discussion. That kind of clarity, they'll understand. And they're talking to Iran. Instead, it's, a, it's about appeasement. It's trying to help make sure that everybody feels good about things. And that is weakness. And, you know, look at what Robert O'Brien wrote, the former national security advisor, one of the best we've ever had. He wrote this piece, and he talked about peace through strength. That's what Trump brought. That's what Reagan brought. And the world is a safer place. If we would do that. But Biden doesn't have it in him. Yeah, I mean, the recent reporting, and of course it's gotten quiet because that ceasefire deal apparently fell apart. But the, the recent reporting had the White House considering whether or not they talk to Hamas and just keep Israel out at that point. I mean, you want to talk about polluting and raising the toxicity of your relationships with our greatest allies. Just do something like that. So maybe it's better Biden doesn't do anything if those are his best ideas. Uh, Jason Chaffetz, thank you. Great to have you start us off. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.